Welcome to the show. It was a policy making in three tweets. President Trump today announced on his Twitter feed he will not allow transgender people to serve in any capacity in the U.S. military, reversing President Obama's rule last summer, which said they could. It was surprising to say the least and troubling that a decision of this magnitude was announced in tweets. It brought about a lot of questions. Why did he do it this way and not in a joint statement with the Pentagon? What does it mean for those transgender service women and men serving right now? And finally, was Trump even correct when he said in those tweets that transgender military burden this nation with tremendous medical costs and disruption? First, what does Trump's policy by tweet mean for the thousands of people in the transgender community serving this country right now? The short answer from his administration seems to be unclear. That's something that the Department of Defense and the White House will have to work together as uh, implementation takes place and is done so uh, lawfully. That answer signals that most of the basic dotting of I's and crossing of T's on this new policy hasn't been done which is odd as the Department of Defense has been studying what the impact of transgender people serving in the U.S. military would be for more than a year. So let's focus on the two issues Trump brought up in his tweets as to why he made this decision. First, he claims transgender people burden the military with tremendous medical costs. Well, in a study by Rand Corp, a study commissioned by the Department of Defense, it was estimated that the allowance of trans people to serve, including medical costs, would add 8.4 million to the total medical costs of all active duty service members. That's a little more than one tenth of 1% of what our military spends on health care for all of its people. One tenth of 1%. And while we're talking about cost, you should think about this. According to the Military Times, the Department of Defense spent $41.6 million in 2014 on the erectile dysfunction drug Viagra. That is five times what transgender service members would cost this country. The other issue the president gave for his decision was this. He said transgender servicemen and women will disrupt. This is an argument familiar to the issue of who can serve and who can't. In the 1930s and 40s, it was said that black people would disrupt others from being able to serve our military. Well, that proved to be untrue 69 years ago today Truman desegregated the U.S. military. Not so long ago, it was also said gays and lesbians would disrupt the ranks. Also proving not to be true, Don't Ask, Don't Tell was repealed six years ago. And women. We were told that women in combat roles would be too disruptive. That ban was lifted in 2015. Today, high-ranking Republicans publicly called out President Trump's policy as wrong. Senator John McCain said, quote, any American who wants to serve our country should have the opportunity to do so and should be treated as the patriots they are. Senator Orrin Hatch had a similar statement saying, I don't think we should be discriminating against anyone. This is something that has been dominating social media and conversations all day long. I had the chance to speak to two veterans who are transgender and both of them just used the words disappointed and sad mm -hmm. after reading this decision. And they had questions about their health care with the VA as it goes forward. And in terms of what's next, well, the White House official statement is the department, they're going to work with the Department of Defense and figure it out. I didn't realize it was just 2015 that we finally allowed women in combat. Women in combat positions. Yeah. Yes. yeah we, obviously, women have been serving in the militaries, but it's that whole front lines right. argument. They didn't want them in harm's way because the argument was that men would be so moved by women in combat that they would have to come save us from peril. It's, it's super interesting, but we're clearly not, uh, we're not far off from that even, nope. you know what I mean? So nope. we still have a long way to go. Apparently.